Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Lord, prepare me to be sanctuary. Pure and holy, tried and true. everybody all these smiling faces in the morning especially when it's a, a dreary morning this morning here so I get lots of sunshine smiling out at me I'm going to bring a little bit of sunshine to hopefully um, to the rest of you by starting off with our sacred space this morning um, and then um, Anita my mom is going to read our opening prayer so if everybody could hold some silence for a minute while I light these candles. And these candles are in memory and in honor of all of my residents today at the place where I am. I'm hoping that all of you can spend some time with an older person and experience the joy and the light that they bring to all of us. Amen. Mom, do you want to go on next with our opening prayer? Do you want to unmute yourself? Reminder for everybody that we mute not because we don't want to hear from you, but just so everybody else can hear. So feel free to okay. raise a hand and we now are I got it. To, to do okay. it. Now you got it. Okay, good morning, everyone. This is from a book called Always We Begin Again, The Benedictine Way of Living by John McQuinston. At the beginning of each day, after we open our eyes to receive the light of that day, as we listen to the voices and sounds that surround us, we must resolve to treat each hour as the rarest of gifts and to be grateful for the consciousness that allows us to experience it, recalling in thanks that our awareness is a present from we know not where or how or why. When we rise from sleep, let us rise for the joy of the true work that we will be about this day and considerately cheer one another. Life will always provide matters for concern. Each day, however, begins with it reasons for joy. Every day carries the potential to bring the experience of heaven. Have the courage to expect good from it. Be gentle with this life and use the light of life to live fully in your time. Amen. Amen. Thank you. A special one for me. <laughs> so I wanted to have folks remember that and, and to welcome each other in our affirmation. Let us worship together, seekers and cynics, sinners and saints, every single one of us. 
Let us practice together as a community bound by the love of God and the forgiveness of Jesus, which the spirit has brought into existence for everyone's healing, whether they be churched or unchurched, regardless of sexual orientation, rich or poor, old or young, healthy or sick, lost or found. Let us worship together, creating a safe space where God's love is found. So welcome. Rob, you have our words of assurance this morning? I do. Give me a sec to bring that on up. <clears throat> so some of you may have heard these words before, um, but I think that they're just always good as um, a Christian to have um, at the ready in your pocket or whatever. When Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed the hillside. Those who were apprenticed to him, the committed, climbed with him. Arriving at a quiet place, he sat down and taught his climbing companions. And this is what he said. You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and his rule. You're blessed when you feel you've lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. You're blessed when you're content with just who you are. No more, no less. That's the moment you find yourselves proud owners of everything that can't be bought. You're blessed when you work up a good appetite for God. He's food and drink in the best meal you'll ever eat. You're blessed when you care. At the moment of being careful, you find yourselves cared for. You're blessed when you get in your inside world, your mind and your heart put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. You're blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete or fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. You're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. Persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. And not only that, count yourselves blessed every time people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you to discredit me. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and they are uncomfortable. You can be glad when that happens. Give a cheer, even for they, even though they don't like it, I do, and all heaven applauds, and know that you are in good company. My prophets and witnesses have always gotten into this kind of trouble. Praise be to God. Amen. Thanks, Rob. That was terrific. Words to live by, for sure. So I wanted to just give some time to, for folks to check in. Let us know what's happening. Let us know where God's been in your life this week and where you've seen God. Christina, do you want to unmute? Good morning, everybody. Glad to see everybody. Yeah, my week has been strange. That's all I have to say about it because my best friend and neighbor left this park on Thursday night driving to Indiana with a big U-Haul truck and her car on a flatbed on the back of it. She drove through a line of storms that had seven tornadoes in it. She didn't get to Indiana until Friday afternoon about five o'clock. Um, I, I, the past couple of mornings, I have not wanted to get out of bed because she, she was like my best friend here in the park. So right now I'm feeling like I just moved into the park and I don't know anybody, even though I do, but she was, she was my go-to person. If I had a problem, I could always run next door and talk to her and just hang out with her. She was just one of the truest friends I've ever had in my life. And I'm so upset that she's gone, but I know that she had to do it because she's near her family. But Christina, we'll, we'll, 
we'll keep you in our prayers for sure. Um, it's so hard to lose a friend. You know, the, that physical presence is means a lot, I know. Um, Absolutely. Anybody else? What else is, Deb? Deb, you're muted. Okay, thank you. There we go. Can, can you all see me okay? Um, mm -hmm. Okay, great. I can't see my picture up there for some reason, but it's nice to see everyone again. I've missed being here. Um, I, you probably know um, I, I had a knee replacement uh, the, the end of March, and it's really been something, I have to tell you. <laughs> but but uh, so it's been quite a recovery, and um, I'm glad to glad to be back. But I, you know, through all these weeks, it it's definitely been humbling and um i you know I'm trying to look at the the night the good things that have come out of this and one of them is my dad's been taking me my 87 year old father has been taking me to physical therapy twice a week in northampton and uh it's been nice that quality time that i you know you don't tend to have with somebody on a normal basis so that's been really nice um i'm actually going to be starting to drive pretty soon and i don't want to tell him that i can drive now i'd rather <laughs> continue this thing but it's been really nice but i've been mia and i'm glad to be back thank you we are so happy to have you back then thank you that's great we won't tell that that you have your driving ability yeah. back if you want okay thank you <laughs> anybody else seen god this week john Good morning, everybody. And as usual, definitely one of the highlights of the week. Um, so uh, yesterday I was <clears throat> at my mom's uh, working on her gardens and stuff. And um, and she is so gracious. She comes out and, and you know, looks around the garden. And <clears throat> but over the past couple of weeks, for some reason, I think she's really kind of uh realize the wonders that occur in a garden from its beauty to its miracles to the the growth that you just see every day and it was so beautiful and it's so wonderful to get to do that with my mom but and so i was driving home last night and what i realized was it it's kind of like watching each other grow in our knowledge of our faith and uh to see my mom grow and realize the the amazing power of the garden and and it's the same thing with our relationship with god and to be able to watch all of us uh grow in our faith um that is just a treasure to me and it just brought it into such clarity uh, that I wanted to share it with you. Uh, so there you go. Thanks so much. Terrific. Thanks, John. Mom? I want to thank God because I'm basically over the hives and the itchies that I had for six weeks. He's kind of keeping me honest by giving me one at a time right now. But that just reminds me that I need to thank him about every 15 minutes for that blessing that I'm over it. Uh, also, I had dental surgery this week and God got me through that. And my family with uh, Melinda and, and Megan here. So hallelujah and thank you, Lord. Great, thanks. Anybody else? Lisa, did I see your hand up? earlier? No. Okay. Randy. I want to thank God for a, another month of uh, clean blood, no cancer cells. Yeah, that's a great one. All right. We thank that. We're thankful for that too, Randy. All right. Anybody else? Dio. Hello, I, how you doing everyone? Was having some internet issues, but I'm here. Thank God. Um, I just wanna thank God for the many blessings and 
I was, we was all able to celebrate my daughter's um, birthday on the 25th. And it was, it's a joy to, to be able to have um, that time with her. We all went bowling and we had our friends around, you know, something low key, but fun. And it was just a wonderful thing. I thank God for her and my family every day. Amen. All right. So unless I forgot anybody, I'm wondering if we have a song. Andrew, can I tap you? Always, always. Good morning. Everybody. All right. Unlimited songs, Karen. <laughs> Let's see here. I'm going to share my screen. Andrew. That was terrific. I don't think I've heard that one before. I love that. So um, I think we're at the point now where we're going to have Deb do some scripture for us, and then I'm going to turn it over to Lance for the message for this morning. So Deb, if you want to take it away. Okay. So this is from Apostle Paul's letter to the Philippians, where he describes his position prior to his experience with Jesus and following. I, I was circumcised on the eighth day. I am from the people of Israel and the tribe of Benjamin. I am a Hebrew of the Hebrews. With respect to observing the law, I'm a Pharisee. With respect to devotion to the faith, I harassed the church. With respect to righteousness under the law, I'm blameless. These things were my assets, but I wrote them off as a loss for the sake of Christ. But even before that, I consider everything a loss in comparison with the superior value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. I have lost everything for him. But what I lost, I think of as sewer trash so that I might gain Christ and be found in him. In Christ, I have a righteousness that is not my own and that does not come from the law, but rather from the faithfulness of Christ. It is the righteousness of God that is based on faith. The righteousness that I have comes from knowing Christ, the power of his resurrection and the participation of in his sufferings. It includes being conformed to his death so that I may perhaps reach the goal of the resurrection of the dead the word of God for the people of God. Amen. All right. Thank you, Deb, for the reading. And I, I'm uh, great to see everyone. Uh, I'm going to try something new. And, uh, so, and I know a few of you have to leave early. Mom, you're one of them, and I know Deb is on her way to come get or is, is picking you up, but I'm glad you're here for now, and um, we appreciate your commitment and everything to coming. Um, so here we go. Jesus has been crucified. His unjustifiable death made complete. He was laid to rest. He then arose from death and was resurrected. He claimed victory over death. 
Jesus, the Messiah, ordained by God to show the world the way of everlasting peace and well-being. Jesus, the Christ, bridges the realm of the earthly world and the divine, connecting humankind with Yahweh, the God of creation. Now the work begins for the disciples. Many questions need to be answered. What are we to do? How do we continue the teachings of Jesus? How do we proclaim that the Lord Jesus is king? Where do we go from here? For those who continue to promote and follow Jesus, those who wish to live the way of the Messiah, there are many, many pitfalls. Pressure for them is everywhere. They are finding themselves outcasts, unable to rely on the Roman authorities, and viciously persecuted by those Hebrews who cannot accept Jesus as the new Messiah. Among those ready and raring to squelch this new, odd tribe of Jesus followers is Saul. Saul, who would become Paul, is utterly aware that those who are claiming a new Messiah are making noise. They seem to be growing in numbers, and they threaten everything Saul knows about Yahweh, and that's a lot. Saul and Saul's father and his father's father and beyond, beyond that have all dedicated their lives to strict adherence to the laws as they were written in the Torah, the first five books of the Hebrew Bible. They've studied every single word. Saul and his people have lived every minute of their lives centered in Yahweh. There is no other way. Saul and those around him pray the Shema twice each day. One might say religiously. They say, quote, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. In other words, Love God with all your being. Their knowledge, their existence, everything they do and say is to love God with action, obedience, and covenantal faithfulness. Anything less than that is unacceptable. For, for Saul, it was one thing that they, his people, must live among non-Jews. He has long lived amongst non-believers and with those who worship many idols or nothing at all. He has learned to work around that. But to have other Jews promoting a new king, this is utter blasphemy. It is unacceptable. It's a cancer, and it must be stopped. Emotions run high for Saul. He is raging with anger. He's bitter and indignant. The Bible says he's quote, murderous. He was seething at the very idea that these fellow Hebrews had strayed from the path and were worshiping one other than Yahweh. Saul is on the war path. This is how Saul found himself on the road to Damascus, as told in Acts 9 of the Holy Bible. Saul is headed for vengeance, went out of nowhere, Suddenly, a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground, and he heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? The voice he hears is Jesus. Saul is blinded. Those around him see nothing. They hear something, but they cannot understand what they have heard. But Saul comes too, and he is now blind. Saul's blindness is resolved, and Saul's conversion begins. Saul is the very person who becomes Paul, one of Jesus' most devout apostles. In a single instance, Jesus has brought him into a new understanding of his faith. He transcends, and one might say overcomes, that which had blinded him, and, be, and Saul begins to see anew. Author and former Bishop N.T. Wright, in his book called Paul, speaks of Saul's zeal. Saul's actions are those of an angry zealot. Saul is committed to wiping out these Jesus followers, even if it means murder. 
Saul's zeal is energized by fear and anger. It smolders and it burns and it becomes a dangerous and toxic thing. Reza Aslan in his book called Zealot, The Life and Times of Jesus of Nazareth, refers, as the name implies, to Jesus as also being a zealot. Here is how Aslan describes zeal for Jesus, and the same would fit for Saul. He quotes, zeal implied a strict adherence to the Torah and the law, an uncompromising devotion to the sovereignty of God. To be zealous for the Lord was to walk in the blazing footsteps of the prophets, of heroes of old, men and women who tolerated no partner to God, who would bow to no king save the king of the world, and who dealt ruthlessly with idolatry and with those who transgressed God's law. So here we have it, friends, a tale of two zealots, Jesus and Saul. Both are extraordinary. One takes his zeal, his extremism, to the point of violence, hatred, and separation. The other, Jesus, sacrifices his own life so that others may find cosmic renewal, divine truth, acceptance, and unconditional love from the one God, Yahweh, the creator of all. Can you see the difference? Jesus has shined an intense light on Paul, brought forth his blindness, and lifted the veil that he now could see. Paul's life in that one instant has changed. From that moment on, Paul began to work tirelessly to promote the works and ways of Jesus, who he now understood was the Messiah who could bring the worlds together as one. Paul never stopped with his zeal. The energy, commitment, and dedication simply shifted from fear and anger to love, compassion, and acceptance. His love of God and his commitment to that end simply turned into a deep understanding of the grace of Christ Jesus. Paul encouraged followers to continue to love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, and with all your strength. But he began to see his message in a new light. In this way, he began to teach Jew and Gentile, male and female, rich and poor, in ways that brought wholeness to their lives. What is that battle for you? What is it for you that blinds you? What makes you angry or fearful? What makes you feel incomplete? How are your zealous energies being used? What happened to Paul on the road to Damascus was no accident. It did not happen as the result of human work. What happened to Paul happened by the hand of God. Through Jesus, a new reality was revealed. In Philippians 8, Paul writes, nothing happens without Jesus. We tend to find ourselves in need of help. We find ourselves feeling unfulfilled, hungry, lonely, angry, and tired. We seek solutions all over the place, don't we? We use our zeal for many things, but nothing seems to work. We seek, but we are unable to see the way. Today, friends, just like Saul, you need Jesus, and I need Jesus. Jesus can lift away that blindness. Jesus can feed that hungry place that never seems satisfied. Jesus can take away that thirst that always seems to go unquenched. The same thing holds true for us as individuals as it is for our families, communities, and our churches. We need this for our own salvation. We need this for the salvation of the church. We need this for the salvation of the human race. Ask yourself this, how much of your time is spent saying these words with deep enthusiasm, trust, and faith. This again is the Shema. Hear this, friends. Our God is Lord, the center of all there is. 
Love God with all your heart and all your being and all your strength. Hear these words and let this thought prevail. Share this message with others and share it with joy. Friends, if you're not already a zealot, become a zealot to this message. Center in God for all things. Become a zealot to compassion. Become a zealot to unconditional acceptance. Become a zealot to humility, generosity, and sacrifice. Become a zealot to Jesus Christ. Go for it, friends. Go for it with amazing zeal. Jesus is calling us. How shall we answer? Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, you are the center of all. You are the Alpha and Omega. We love you with all our heart and all our being and all our strength. Be with us in faith and help us serve you and all your people with every ounce of zeal we have. Amen. Thank you, friends, and God bless you. And uh, yeah, so there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Lance. I think um, Andrew has a song for us. Yeah, so, yeah. Thanks, Karen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Andrew, go ahead. We got to do that again. <laughs> Amazing grace. How can that song not fit into just about everything in our lives? Beautiful. Um, well, thanks again, friends. And this is a, a time that we come to our, we, what we call faith abundance. It's sort of sharing where God is in our lives. It's anything having to do with the message and anything um, that you want to ask prayers for, because we'll segue from this into our prayers. And I think Barbara has something she wanted to say. Well, I'm a karaoke person, and uh, I'm not driving these days, so I have to find my way to places that are close by, and there is a, a place that does karaoke on Thursday nights, and for the last couple months, I've been, you know, walking over there and, and, and enjoying the music and then walking home, so the other night, I was going to go there, and I had this funny feeling that I shouldn't go, but I went anyway. And when I got there, 
I sang a couple songs and I had the strangest feeling that I needed to leave and come home. So I walked home and when I got home, I sat quietly, I lived by myself and I sat quietly and I said to myself, God was teaching me something. He didn't want me to go there. I went anywhere, but he made it impossible for me to stay. So I came home and my final words were, he's protecting me and he's watching over me all the time. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Barbara. Yes, Christina. As you all know, I have uh, my first oral surgery in June. Um, it's hard not to think about it. It really is. But when I do, and I find my mind wandering that way, I think about that verse in the Bible that says, don't worry about today or tomorrow, because tomorrow has its own things going on. That's, that's how I take it. I keep trying to hand that fear over because because I, I, I am not the same person I was years ago. And I would have handled this situation a lot differently. I, I would be running away. I'd be trying to hide under a rock. I'd be like, no, I don't want to do this. But right now I am so secure in my faith. And I know that this too shall pass and I will get through it. And I gotta trust God every step of the way. I don't care if it's every minute. I have to say, God is with me. Jesus is with me. So is the Holy Spirit. The Trinity is always, always, always with me. And with everybody else too. I wanna say prayers for Randy. I only got a part of what was going on with him, but I hope that things work out for him and his place to live and, and this and that. Um, I, I feel bad because I know that he can't really move around like he used to, you know, but uh, I have a feeling that things will work out for him. I just pray that way. And I think that's another reason why my faith is stronger because I'm praying for everybody else. <laughs> and that's, that's how it is for me. I have to pray for everybody else so I can get my blessings. Thank you, Christina. Yeah, God bless you. And uh, just to bring everybody up on Randy, uh, he um, ha he's had some phone issues, so he he's going to watch on Facebook. And um, he does have uh, to he's moving on Tuesday. I think it it's pretty quick, and um, hopefully he finds a safe place for him to move. And uh, but so let's definitely we'll hold him in prayer. And thanks for reminding us, Christina. And Christina, we we hold you in prayer with your fears. And also uh, for uh, kind of the grief of the loss of your friend, who's really not completely lost, but it is different, right? Anybody else? Yeah. Yes, Dio. Um, I just wanted to let you know that your sermon today was very powerful. And for me on point, because um, one of the interesting things Christina said about fear, sometimes when God tasks you to do something, Something happens where, yes, you listen, but what happens is, is somehow this fear comes and it stops you from doing the very thing that you know you're supposed to be doing. And one thing I know is that, and I keep saying this, I, I always go back to this faith group because as you keep coming, you start really opening yourself, opening your heart, opening the true love that you really have. And everyone here just somehow just gives you the lift that you need in order to move forward. And this is what we do for each other. We hold each other up in those times that when we are tasked to do things, we're able to move forward. For example, I've been telling Lance and telling people here and there about a podcast I've been trying to get up going. It's called The Journey. And I wanted something to kind of enhance what this is that we're doing on a bigger scale. Because we're doing this not just for us. We're doing this for everybody. No exclusions. And when people think of this, they think of exclusion. 
So God has been pushing me to do this. So finally, I cleared out my room. I got my cameras and everything set. And I got all this stuff ready. And even now, I'm, I'm so nervous. But just being here with you guys and knowing that anything that I do to enhance God's love and God's world and what we're doing here, it, even though I fear I still move forward with you guys. So I ask for the prayers that I can still move forward and get the guidance from you to make this a fruition, but to continue to spread and let people know that are not here, that faith ways exist. Just come check us out. And as you come, you will begin to grow. Yeah, thank you, Dio. So powerful. And you know, realizing for all of us that when we're here, it makes such a difference for each person. And yeah, anybody else? Brother John. This, uh, th I promise to keep this quick. This, uh, this came out of um, Rob's uh, words today. <clears throat> and <clears throat> excuse me, it was the very end of it. And it kind of speaks to what Dio was just sharing. I can't read it very well because my writing's terrible. but. Um, it said something along the lines of we are blessed when you when your love of God leads to persecution. I mean, so where's our fear? Where's our fear in sharing the most amazing thing in our lives with other people? If 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 uh, if we are blessed when we do it, uh, I got to I got to be more conscious about trying to do it a little bit more. And uh, I just thought that was really powerful. And the whole service has just been um, really special. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. And I'm, I'm getting poked and prodded over here. Somebody has another message for us, Barbara. The message I have is a message I take for myself as well. Sometimes when God is calling us to do certain things, it's the enemy that, that either makes it fearful or causes us to wonder or causes us to question. And that's the way I see it. You know, if, if, if I'm called to do something and suddenly I don't know what to do, I just tell myself that it's the enemy that's working against me and instead of letting God work in my favor. That's what I had to add. Amen. Thank you, Barbara. I have a built-in teacher over here, <laughs> keeping me in line. Um, any, anybody else? Yes, Jan, good morning. Hi, everybody. Uh, just continued prayers for my little sister, Julie. She just went back into the hospital last night. She has pneumonia and um, she's just suffering as our, our whole family right now. So just continued prayers. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jan. Anyone else? All right. I, I want just a, a word of joy uh, for my wife and my son are participating in a disc golf tournament today in the rain up in Greenfield. And um, it's just a it's just a great thing. And uh, I'm excited for them and you know, hope they uh, are doing well up there. So uh, nice joy to have uh, that. Um, and so, friends, just uh, let us. Take that moment to breathe in the good, breathe in the glory, breathe in, accept that amazing grace and breathe out all that junk. I forget what Paul called it today, something about nasty trash or something, but breathe it all out. Get that off our chest and let us pray. Oh God, with thanks, we come to you. We come to you in awesome wonder for all that thy hands have made. We give thanks for your faithfulness to us. And while we have many problems, we are aware that all our solutions are found in you. Help us push away the things which tempt us in pointless directions that we may find truth in the way in our gr being grounded in you. God, we ask to take from us what you can to help eliminate the fears of others, to be there for Christina in her loss, 
to be there for all of us and our fears. We ask you to be with Randy for his housing. We ask you to continue to be there with Debbie and her healing. Oh God, open our hearts. We pray for your guidance. We pray to move forward. We ask for you to be there with Julie and Phil for their healing, for their patience, and for those who are helping them. We give thanks for Matt's health how Matt has recovered, and we know that there is nothing but amazing grace that makes that happen. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And friend, and I invite you now to unmute and let's get messy with our messy Lord's Prayer, as only we can do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our Father, who art in heaven, Glory forever. Amen. 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 All right. Right on. Well, I have to, I'm going to mute again for the sake of the, the better, for the, the better of all. But uh, just remember to raise your hand. Today, friends, we come to communion with zeal, zealously, being in love, giving thanks, being grateful. And somewhere, I have, maybe I don't. I had a poem I was going to use for communion. <laughs> it's probably in my turn. Hang on. Keeping all these papers straight is not easy. <laughs> so, uh, I wanted to share this poem just because I uh, knew I maybe went a little long on the sermon today, but I wanted to, uh, as we come to our communion, I invite you to join in. Um, you know, it's nice to have the elements. If you don't have the elements, you can still join in communion with your heart and your soul, and your love for each of us and for Christ. This is a poem by Frank Carpenter. It was, it's a meditation for being used during the Lord's Supper, and I, I liked it, so I thought we would do this. Beloved child, hang on a second. I'm going to do a mute all. There is a little bit. Okay. Beloved child, through you, though you had wandered far from me, though your very nature repelled me, though your rebellion was deserving of death, I love you still, beloved child. Because of my boundless love for you, I reached out across time for you. I reached out beyond sin for you. I reached out to rescue you. Because of my love for you, beloved child, because of my perfect love for you, I took your sin upon myself. I bore the cross you should have borne. I died the death which you deserved. I sacrificed my life for you. All for the love of you, beloved child. Because of my sacrificial love for you, I canceled your iniquity. I cleansed you from the stain of sin. Come to us and take this bread. We bless this bread, bringing it and making it sacred. We then break the bread. And then we give the bread. The body of Christ. In that same way, loving cup. Jesus poured out the wine and he said, take this and take it in remembrance of me, the body and blood of Christ.
I don't know which is older, the wine or the bread. <laughs> Let us pray. Oh God, we come joyfully. We give thanks for this community. This is your community. We are a community in you and of you. We give thanks for bringing us together. We thank you for guiding us in our lives and we thank you for the meal that we share at this time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And as we come to our offering, friends, we remind you again and again and again that your presence is the gift that we bring. Go out and serve God as your gift. Serve God zealously, full of zeal for compassion, humility, generosity, sacrifice, for the love of all mankind, for unconditional acceptance. Open yourselves to God, and in that, you become the gift. And if you want to give other ways, there are other ways to give. But give boldly. Don't worry about what you give because it will come back in different ways. You are already rich in Jesus, rich in God, rich in this community. Nothing else you need. Let us pray. Oh God, accept us, your gifts, as imperfect as we are. We give what we can. We give our energies to love. We give our energies to the ways of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Dio, did you have a song from your... Oh, hang on. <laughs> I caught you off guard. We, we thank our musicians for bringing it and uh, our, our leaders. Thank you, Karen, for our devotional this week and remind everyone that we are a cooperative ministry. So if you have something you want to share, if you have something you want to say, we want that to be part of it. it it's what makes us whole. And so we, we want you to. So if you want to write a devotional, if you want to, if you want to preach a sermon, you know, bring it on, baby. Bring it on. Bring it with zeal. That's what we say. All right, Dio, it's all you, baby. All right. Hopefully this is set. <laughs> Blessings to everybody. In our lives, we all have pain, we all have sorrow, but if we are wise, we know that there's always to follow. Freedom me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. For it won't be long till I'm going to need somebody to lean on. Please swallow your pride if thou hast made. You need to borrow, oh, no one can feel those of your needs that you won't let show. You just call, call me brother when you need a hand. We all need somebody to be on. Just might have a problem that you understand. We all need somebody to be on, be on me. When you're not strong, 
and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on, for it won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. Amen. Thank you so much, Dio. That was just amazing. I love the new setup. We definitely, we get to hear you and your voice even more, which is great. So I would like to offer this benediction for folks this morning. And hopefully we'll have time for one more song afterwards. If everyone could take a deep breath in and a deep breath out, just let it all out. O creator God, great one who created the stars and the vast ocean depths, let me begin anew and bloom like the flowers after a spring rain. Free me from the pain of my past. Help me to unburden my mind and my soul and begin again. Refresh my soul, O Lord. Let me move forward in hope. Keep me from revisiting the thoughts and the pain that have held me down and frozen me in place. Let me find forgiveness for those who have injured me. Let me forgive my own mistakes and misdeeds. You are my compass and my anchor. Please, Lord, let me have the strength the strength to let go and to move always toward your light. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. That was a, a Celtic prayer by Beth Maxwell Boyle. So I hope that all of you, as you move on through your week, are able to take the strength of God and go always towards the light. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you all would like to unmute, or actually, I, we probably do have time for one more song. Uh, Joseph, do you wanna bring another one up there? We actually have time for two songs. And then Andrew, if you wanna take the last one, that would be great. Rock us out. Grab your coat and get your hat. Leave your worries on the doorstep. Life can be just direct your feet to the sunny side of the street. Yeah, can't you hear that bitter pat? And the happy tune is your step. Life can be so sweet on the sunny side of the street. I used to walk in the shade with those blues on parade but now i am not afraid because this rover has crossed over if i never had a cent i'd be rich as elon musk now gold dusk at my feet on the sunny side of the sunny side of the god bless the sunny side of the street there <laughs> thank you <laughs> that's great joseph that's a clap that one makes me smile. Andrew, do you want to do one more? Sure thing, sure thing. Fun post loot. All right.
All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That's great. Well, I Davids, hope all of you have a great week. Bev, it's great to see you this morning. Oh, it's nice, great to see you guys too. I've, things will things will get better now. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It's really nice. little Dio, it's always great to see you. And Christina, Kara, we didn't hear from you, but it's nice to see you as well. Absolutely. I'll see everybody next week. I always look forward to Sunday. All right, Christina. Awesome. Thanks, Christina. Bye, Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, Mom. Hey, everybody. Thank, Thank you for such Give a lovely hug service to yeah. all of you. Uh, great to see you. Take Namaste, you. everybody. Namaste, Jan. Bye. 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 Uh, thank you, Joseph. Great. Jan will keep you and your family in prayer. Thank you. Yep. Here's today. Uh, peace to all. Oh, uh, it's beautiful. beautiful. Karen and uh, Karen wow. and Bob get extra points today for looking so sharp. You guys look <laughs> <laughs> and a wonderful sacred space so thank you all yep all right we'll see you all later have a great day matt right. it's hey. great to see you hey Lance. Bye, Barbara. yes Bye. John. Hey, uh with randy's situation i'm sure you've already thought of this but would it be would it help him at all with you know new first month kind of rent stuff if would the fund be I, able to support no, him he, 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 he's it's not a financial thing yeah, yeah uh so it's not a i don't think it's a fine it may have something to do with his dogs so oh, I'm, i got you i got you i was uh, just thinking about it and, I, and a, he and i'll be checking in but that's a good i'll i'll make sure and ask john yeah for sure hey, the other the other thing i was thinking about next week is just throwing you know or throwing a, or or inviting everybody to maybe share emails on their uh on the chat thing anybody who was interested if you know oh, so then you know addresses yeah you know just just yeah. if you need someone to or if you just want to for fun so i don't know think about that think if that's something that might make sense sounds good all right all right brother hey did you all get right. my text though i haven't gotten any text yet i don't know well, I might. all right <laughs> just know that that um uh, oh no 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 just right before the service uh oh. just know that uh i i misunderstood i got your beautiful family reunion uh uh framed photo and oh. i thought that Didi had given it oh so Didi got all the glory for it and not no me. well well you know my life <laughs> i'm trying to spew the glory all over you right now that came out wrong but uh <laughs> but anyway <laughs> it it right. is really a treasure, Lance, and I so appreciate it. Thank you, John. Blessing. Thank you. Bye Love bye. you, man. Bye-bye. Love you, too. Bye-bye.